Hello and welcome back to Tricol Gaming with me, Fletcher. And welcome to the San Diego Safari Park. And in this video today, I just thought I would give a tour around uh, this completed park because I haven't actually had a chance to um, sort of show people around it and talk about the park and, and everything else. So I thought I would give you all a bit of a tour around and um, yeah, just sort of go around this newly completed park. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, please do consider giving this video a like and subscribe for more content from all of us at Tricore Gaming. So, yeah, this park, San Diego Safari. Basically, I wanted to create a park built around the um, tour rides because obviously since we've had the new updates, the tour rides can function as stations now, so uh, you can use them as transportation. So I haven't actually had the opportunity to build a park with that in mind. So I wanted to sort of experiment a little bit, while at the same time building a park that's primarily just a big tour. What do we actually have here? So um, we have two main guest zones, uh, a guest zone at the north and a guest zone at the south end. And then in between those, we have two sort of big safari sections which are divided by this uh, rock formation slash valley in the middle. Uh, this is the San Diego map, and as you can tell by the colours of the path, I am using mods, um, but the, the actual map itself is still within the boundaries of the um, standard map, so there's not expanded um, islands on this particular um, park. So it's all fitting in with the conventional boundaries, it's just um, just everything else that the mods have been applied to. And uh, to make it easier to wander around the park, I have shut it to guests for the day so that we can go and have a proper look around. So uh, let's go down to a guest level and start the tour. So here we are at the entrance area. And in my head canon, how this works is that basically uh, you get an underground train from San Diego itself and it leads directly to these um, underground stations which these entrance buildings are located above. And this is sort of the entrance way so we have two entrances uh, with these lovely palms and planters in the middle and then we have uh, the lovely sail, um, I, th I, I want to call them sails because I don't, I don't really, I think that is really what they're supposed to be. These, the lovely sail decorations uh, from the lagoons forming sort of a nice decorative edge to this entrance. And we have the same thing over here. And what I'll do as well, as well as I'll, uh, I'll have a look around the park in the, in the night time, just so you can see some of the lighting effects that works here, because uh, there's actually some very good lighting for these. Um, and then this is the main path into the park. Some nice lighting again and fountains. And then we're, this is basically the start of the park proper. So we have the amenities area here. And the colour scheme we went with a royal blue and a gold. Um, that was a suggestion by I think Nerdguy Productions in the stream. So that was the colour scheme that we went for, for all the amenities here. And we basically just have the, the main um, sort of guest amenity section which leads directly to the exhibit and some other bits and bobs. We've got a little seating area here we've we've created our own um, sculpture by having some of the uh, conventional uh, decoration items sort of tiered and positioned to form a, a bigger sculpture there and if you're using mods that's something I would suggest that you do uh, behind the amenities we have the bathrooms protected by this Carnotaurus fountain here. Uh, again that was a suggestion by someone in stream to have the Carnotaurus statue uh, on that fountain. And then this um, gallery overlooks our first exhibit but because that's part of the tour I'm going to take a look at that in a second and we're going to go this way to begin with. So. Um, this is the major seating area for the northern section of the guest zone. So we've got this lovely um, wood panelling here, my, my lovely wood panel path 
All these are available on Nexus mods, should you want to try any of them out. And uh, this wood panel path then uh, covers this nice seating area. We have a lovely uh, fountain here. I tried to go for something that was a little Jurassic World Dominion-y by putting the Spinosaurus skull behind it. I think that works quite well. And this actually uh, edges onto the lagoon. So I wanted there to be not just the tours here, but I wanted there to be a lagoon uh, experience. Let's pop inside. So to match the rest of this sort of uh, area of the park, we've got the the sails here uh, as decorations. And then I thought I'd create our own little uh, floating island in the middle of the lagoon with the fountains and some trees along the center. Uh, and then let's have a look down at the actual lagoon itself. So we've got uh, a nice, uh, I think I went with a coral reef biome for this particular lagoon. And we've got a pair of Liprorodon in here um, as just our, our first little uh, display there. Lovely. If I come out of a first person view, just to get a better look at the, at the actual lagoon itself, you can see that it's only a, a single lagoon section, um, but it's easily big enough uh, for what I want it to do. And uh, we can have a better look at this little floating island here. So basically this is two uh, fountain decorations stacked together. And then I've put a, a little central uh, planter block there just to give us something for the palm trees and such to grow in. And then down in here, there's our lovely Librorodon. Uh, we've got one here with what I like to call the mint choc chip ice cream skin, which is black and green. And then um, if this one will come out from underneath the fountains, I think this one is the um, full, what I call the fallout skin, which is a sort of uh, cyan green and black. Um, so yeah, that's very nice and lovely, very nice. Uh, and yeah, and then we've got this sort of coral reef uh, biome sort of lagoon. We've got coral growing all the way up to the viewing gallery. And there are lights in there just to add some bioluminescence to the coral. And then we've got the same thing here. Uh, we've put in a couple of cages just for some interest. But yeah, so a simple exhibit for our first uh, animals. Let's go back to ground level and continue the tour. So just to fill up a little bit of space here, we have this uh, lovely little um, garden, I suppose you could call it, with the Spinosaurus skeleton here. These are just the standard decoration trees. What I've done is I've sunk a couple of the bigger trees into the ground to create bushes, just to give a little bit of difference in the terrain heights of the vegetation. And they're all surrounded by this lovely marbled orange JPOG path, which I thought uh, made them stand out quite nicely. And then over here, this is actually the area of where you would be um, waiting basically to get on your tour truck to take you round to the next part of the park. And I wanted this to be quite a big area because this is probably going to be quite busy. So I wanted there to be lots of space for people to walk around, mill around to queue. I sort of imagine that the queue for the tour would probably go down the middle or you would probably um, you know, go, go to the tour building, grab a ticket or something and that would give you a number and then you would be waiting around here for uh, your tour truck to leave. And it's why I've also put in a, a small little restaurant just over the way there just to give people something to go and have a look at. Um, so, so the actual way up to the tour is um, sort of framed by these two fountains and the um, amber um, monument there. These are lit blue and red, which is just a little uh, Star Trek reference there to their, uh, their, the engine pods, which obviously have the blue sides and the red ends, which I thought was quite fun. And then we've got plenty of seating area here with this lovely wood effect pave, paving. And I've just got a couple of simple sculptures here just for some interest. And a couple of Cycad Grove Gardens here just again for some added interest. And then we actually have the tour building itself. Um, 
let's actually have a look at the tour areas at this first tour area now because the other side of the northern section of this um, particular um, park is kind of not really part of this end of the park it's a almost a completely separate section so uh, let's have a look at the tour now so to start with I thought it would be a good idea just to have a look at the tour uh, this the first section of the tour from the um, bird's eye view from to get a better view of how it fits in with the rest of the park so over here we have the northern guest section with our entrances the um, the tour sort of tour ride building itself and our lagoon and then over here we have the southern guest section which we are basically going to be going to and then we have the tour ride basically in the middle so the tour track follows uh, a simple line through this section and it's basically divided into a series of enclosures using invisible walls and we have a river that basically runs um, from this first exhibit over by the guest area around this meander uh, under this bridge and then over to the sort of um, crater or valley in the middle of the map which all the water then runs into and then we have another water source sort of on this this far edge here and then we have two enclosures so either end there is a sunken enclosure which is below the tall ride um, road level and then the rest of this is relatively flat apart from some minor terrain dif uh, elevation differences so let's start um, with this end of the tour ride because this actually um, sort of leads into uh, the guest area so we'll have a look at this one from the bird's eye view to begin with so this actually has um, Nigeosaurus and Sintausaurus in and I just wanted there to be a little sort of simple dinosaur enclosure for people arriving at the park to have a look at but also to begin the actual tour so the tour truck ride as you can see is located above the level of this enclosure and then this is sort of the actual gateway to uh, the rest of the tour itself we'll talk about that in a second but this uh, is the main enclosure so we have our little uh, Nigeosaurus with the tiger stripe pattern and then we have our Sintausaurus with this sort of yellow um, mottling and purple crest which I thought was quite nice this uh, I actually really like using these aviary galleries as normal viewing galleries for dinosaurs I like the way that it's um, sort of located above ground level but then it's also open top as well actually just just a, as a quick um, little side note I don't understand why you would have open surfaces for your aviary uh, viewing gallery the opportunities for pterosaurs to just poke their heads through there and snap at guests would just be a massive uh, safety hazard so I actually think this is a very badly designed viewing gallery um, but anyway so yeah this this enclosure is just relatively simple we've got a water feature here we've got some simple planting and just as a little nice touch I've got some um, sort of blue lights here from again the lagoon decoration um, mod uh, not mods the update and in the dark this adds a nice like little UV blue light sort of glow area to the base of this ridge so uh, it just adds a nice feature now I have used invisible walls pretty much everywhere in this park just to keep dinosaurs in now I've never kind of gone along with the whole Dominion uh, idea that they've in sort of medically put in transponders or little gizmos into the heads of these dinosaurs to get them to to follow the pattern I don't think it's it's a very safe way of doing it I don't think it's a very reliable way of doing it and I also think it's going to be a very time consuming way of doing it so in my headcanon these invisible walls work differently um, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis had this tool utility power that you could put onto the helicopter called the muster and they also had a structure called um, the avoidance beacon and basically how it worked is it just generated a high frequency sound pulse like sonar and that was enough to dissuade the dinosaur from coming close and then the animal would move and you, you could protect 
uh, the park and guests and stuff like that with it. And that's how I, I in my head, canon these invisible walls work. These just create a, a sort of a high frequency sound barrier whenever a dinosaur gets too close and then it tempts the dinosaur to walk away from it. And it's just a much more realistic method, I think, of doing it than um, knocking out a dinosaur, medically implanting a, a, a gizmo and all the associated problems there are with that. So uh, let's actually just have a, a quick look at the sort of the entrance way to the tour and then we'll grab a truck and have a look at the, the actual tour itself. So I wanted to go with something that's quite uh, substantial as a gatehouse. So we've got two um, security towers here and my idea would be these would just be where security personnel would be based your Robert Muldoon characters that would be just, you know, stood up here, just keeping an eye on the uh, tour trucks itself. And, uh, and then we have the actual entranceway. We have these two Jurassic World signs here. Double gates, because that's, um, you know, that's a, a protective feature. You never have an airlock with one gate. It's always two. So that if one of these gates gets locked open, you have another gate you can shut or if it gets jammed or something like that it's just a protection feature and then there's a couple of fountains here and a little sign just for a little bit of decoration let's um, actually just grab this tour truck that's coming in here and we'll have a um, actually no we'll grab this tour truck that's coming here and uh, we'll go and have a look at the tour itself so here we are on board with the tour truck as we leave the first part of this tour ride. And what I'll do is I'll switch camera views as much as I can just to show you off as much of the tour as possible. So from inside and we have the first enclosure here with the Nigerosaurus uh, and the Sintel. And then we have us heading up towards uh, the gatehouse. And actually from a tour ride perspective I have to say this looks quite impressive with the big uh, big gatehouses and uh, towers and the fence line here and then we head all the way through into the park let's just switch view so this first enclosure is nothing too dramatic on the one side there are baryonics I think I might be there you go there's some baryonics there on the right and on the left, or really not necessarily on the left, but for the rest of the enclosure, the baryonics are actually sort of um, kept safe behind their fencing. For the rest of the enclosure, it's shared with some plant eaters. So we've got some iguanodons uh, in here. Uh, one of them has just decided to uh, have a rest quite close. Hello, mate. Right? Lovely. So we've got some iguanodons in here. And I also think there are some um, Kentrosaurus or Hoangosaurus. I don't know. We'll have to keep a lookout. Now, this is the first. The bridges It's actually a lot bigger than uh, uh, I intended. Um, I didn't think it was going to be quite this big. But uh, this goes over the river. And then we have, obviously, these lovely monorail structures and fountains and everything else. Very nice. And then we are kind of into the rest of this first enclosure section. There's the uh, Hoangus. Oh, is that Gigantospino? Something, I think that's Gigantospino actually in this um, area, having a wander along the path with us. This is actually the other part of the Baryonyx enclosure on the right. Um, there's only three Baryonyx in there. You can just see them in the distance. And then this is just the, the rest of Iguanodon. Now I know it's supposed to be a desert sort of environment, but I see no reason why it can't be quite green and lush. So we've got plenty of ginkgos being used here uh, to create nice vegetated areas. Plenty of cycads as well. Love these, these double ginkgo trees there uh, forming a natural sort of bridge. That's a sheer dumb luck, by the way. <laughs> I didn't place them down. And then we have sort of we're into the next enclosure now so we're over the invisible fence line and this is the next set of enclosures so on the right hand side we have a giganotosaurus uh, let's see if we can keep an eye out for him and then on the other side we have plenty of herbivores 
So we have some um, Chasmosaurus in here and Camarasaurus in here. I tried to go with dinosaurs I don't use too often. Um, and I think Chasmo and Camaro, oh, there's the, there's our Giganotosaurus with the Dominion skin. I'm trying to get a good view of him. There we go. There's our Giganotosaurus. And then there's our Camarasaurus and stuff on the other side. Very nice, Giga. Uh, this was made before we had all of the um, skin variation options for the Biosyn um, DLC skins. So obviously that's just the standard, uh, bog standard Giga uh, skin. Chasmo, you're getting awfully close there. Oh, and then we have some, there's some Aranosaurus in this enclosure as well, with the Kamaras and the Chasmos. Uh, they're the standard, the Count Cretaceous uh, design. And basically then the tour ride goes up this uh, ridge line here into the last of the enclosures on this particular side. Um, this enclosure is again located beneath the road area of where the tour ride is located. Uh, the tour goes around the edge of the um, rocky uh, mound in the middle. And then on the right hand side you have just the enclosure and I wanted this to be a bit different so this enclosure just has some sauropods in it and is kind of connected to the southern guest zone which we'll have a look at in a second. So for the sauropods I went with Alamosaurus and the um, Amargosaurus. Amargosaurus is pretty much always in my parks. I love Amargosaurus. I love its skins. I love its design. I think it's a wonderful looking creature. And the Alamosaurus, because it's one of the few sauropods that we have in game that actually has some nice skins to it. And I'll fight anybody who disagrees with me. Um, so here we go, we're coming round to that exhibit now. So we're located quite far above, but it means we get more of an eye level with the dinosaurs. So you can see there's just a couple of, um, there's three Alamosaurus uh, visible there as we go actually into the exhibit. Lovely. Oh, look, we got it. We got one doing its cat thing. <laughs> Salute to the sky, Alamo. And uh, I don't think we can see any Amargosaurus yet. No, we don't. I'm just going to switch camera view so we can have the rear pattern there. And then we come to another gatehouse with a tower. And this is kind of a halfway uh, gate. And what we'll do now is we'll switch back to an overhead view so we can have a look at uh, this area. So just before we look at the southern guest zone, I just thought it'd be nice just to have a closer look at the um, the tour ride areas we've just been through. So here are here is the wonderful Baryonyx uh, area. I've got a mod that uh, makes my Baryonyx a little better to look at. I really love this black and red Baryonyx skin. Isn't that wonderful? Lovely. Um, and yeah, we've got these fish feeders here, invisible fish feeders. Uh, here's the bridge with our lovely monorail sculptures around the outside and yeah there's a giganto spino in here the iguanodons in here uh, just some simple animals and then on this side this this section is actually quite a lot larger this is where we have the camarasaurus chasmosaurus and the aranosaurus there's there's our aranosaurus our chasmo and uh in here somewhere there should be two Camarasaurus. There you go. I really, I still really don't like this Camarasaurus design. I hope um, they're the same people who did Advanced Operation Genesis uh, mods for Dress World Evolution 1 uh, do their Camarasaurus for Dress World Evolution 2 because it's such a wonderful uh, design. And then over here we have our Giganotosaurus little uh, exhibit. I've given him a sort of uh, nest area with some sunken in Spinosaurus bodies there just uh, as somewhere nice to uh, rest. Where is the Giga itself? There he is. He's called Godzilla again thanks to a naming suggestion by somebody uh, in the stream. 
so there is Godzilla the Giganotosaurus and then let's have another a better look at this sauropod exhibit so you can see just how um, lower it is than the rest of the tour ride and here we have two sets of uh, Alamosaurus we've got uh, this lovely battleship grey white and um, blue crested uh, purple blue crested uh, version and then we ha have this uh, brown and lovely green yellow crested version and there are four in here I think or is there only three looks like there are only three oh no there's the fourth one he's hiding in the tree line there you go and then living alongside them we have just a few Amargosaurus with these lovely uh, yellow and black stripes and then we have a, a grey and orange striped version as well and you can see how this uh, actual exhibit is laid out uh, we have sort of a, a higher area up towards the hotels which we'll talk about in a sec second and then it goes drops down towards the water source here and there's plenty of vegetation so this southern uh, guest section we can have an, a better look at from above again and it's fairly simple i wanted it to be not too big so that we have plenty of space for tour ride but the fact that it's on the coastline i thought we we needed it to be sort of an a more peaceful area so this is primarily where i imagine um sort of higher rank higher um paying guests would be staying i kind of imagine that each of these hotels is probably actually more of a private villa uh, that singular families can rent out or maybe they are just uh, more expensive hotels these ones located on the flanks of the um sauropod the alamo enclosure are actually designed to give you a bit of a feeding experience my idea would be that you if you're staying here uh, they do sort of uh, feeding experiences that you could um, pay for or maybe you have um, experts who would be doing sort of chats and talks from these I wanted to make it look like there was more going on here than just um, fence lining and there's two of these particular ones uh, I perhaps this one is a, a little more private a singular villa and then this one is more of a, a larger guest zone let's drop down oh no just before we do that let's uh, just have a look at this area here so we've got the tour rides comes through the uh, gatehouse here I've got the sails again I wanted to keep using the sails just to um, match it to the first part of the park and then we come out here from the Jurassic tour so let's have a guest view of this so here we are at the tour you come off the tour and you're immediately greeted with this lovely um, fountain arrangement here so this is a combination of the lagoon fountain decoration and then I've matched sort of where I think the um, side streams are coming off to be splashing onto the amber statues so we have this lovely little effect and then in the center line we have this final little fountain arrangement here which would be in my opinion connected to the upper bit and yeah it's just a nice multi-tiered fountain arrangement that gives this sort of entrance just something immediate and brilliant to look at um, I think if I was redoing this I'd probably have a statue or something above here just again to make this area a lot more decorative so leading on from here to the right we have more of those sail structures and uh, just a simple seating area here around the DNA fountain and guess lose and then we have the first of the hotels or villas most of this area is built around a large central lagoon so all of these sort of areas would be primarily for guests staying I have a couple of nice little garden like arrangements the yucca plant there and the um, these palms again flanked by this JPOG path just to give it um, make it stand out from the rest of the park and we have a few of these gardens here so we have the two hotels we have some small amenities 
uh, restaurants and such for the guests. But in my opinion, these hotels would have restaurants and stuff attached. Uh, I don't understand why they don't offer a food and drink requirement. <laughs> I think that's an, an error with the game, personally. And then we have a, a sort of what I would like to think of as like the quiet seating area, away from really anything too noisy, just located on the edge of the beach. You can see San Diego in the distance and you have that wonderful beach. If I was building this on expanded islands mode, by the way, I'd probably continue this area down onto the beach itself and have some more villas on the beachfront and uh, just make more of a, more of a, um, more of a feature of the beach itself. This central lagoon itself, we'll look at in a second. Let's just continue looking around the rest. So these sails, mark out the edge of where the tour ride starts again and then we have some more flaming pillars just to match with the lagoon um, viewing gallery on that side and then the tour ride continues onwards from there back into the tour park let's go and have a quick look at the lagoon now um, so let's pop in here so um, the lagoon itself is quite enclosed I wanted it to look quite uh, separate from this area so that you could only really get a good view of it from either this viewing gallery or the hotel over there. So we've flanked it with the tall pillars and the rocks here just to bed it into the environment. We've got a little fountain here. What I like to think in my own head cannon is that these fountains are actually part of the uh, water filtration system for the lagoons and it's just made to look pretty as a nice little um, aside. So what do we have in here? Well, if I drop the viewing gallery down a little bit, you can see we have a volcanic style biome inside and we have two Attenboroughsaurus. And again, a single lagoon section is easily big enough for two Attenboroughsaurus. You don't have to build an enormous lagoon to make it look big enough. Let's go have a look at the lagoon in capture mode so you can see the rest of the sort of area. So here we are. You can see that the lagoon is basically central and I have straightened out four of the sides so that we can build around it and make it look a little neater. So the actual hotel here sticks out over the edge of the lagoon. I've hidden the floating um, wooden panelling with the planter boxes here just to make it look like it's, you know, more connected to the actual hotel. And then the hotel itself is very much overlooking. And again, I imagine they're doing feeding shows. You could buy like fish or squid or something from the hotel in order to feed the Amargosaurus. And they could probably do also expert chats here. And you'd also get a nice, a nice view of the Amargosaurus as they're coming up to grab um, oxygen in order to breathe. And I've also been able to hide the feeder for the um, our for the Attenboroughsaurus, I've been able to hide the feeder uh, under the hotel as well, so it doesn't stick out too much. And then inside we have this um, volcanic fault line arrangement. This is, I think, the best way of making it look volcanic. You use plenty of um, bubble streamers to create this fault line and then put in some geothermal vents in the dead center. I've added this boat just again for some interest with some colored lighting in here so that in the dark it looks really nice and the blue light here just to uh, give it an eerie look on the boat. And then we have some uh, the Attenboroughsaurus itself. I went with what I call the golden vein um, skin. So it's basically this lovely gray main body pattern with this lovely black and uh, golden yellow uh, striping and mottling which I just think is one of the nicer skins for the Attenboroughsaurus. So let's leave them to rest and have a look at the other section of the tour. So the tour ride comes out of the midpoint station protected by the planter boxes that sorts of people just wandering in front of it. Um, leads away from this halfway point and then back to another double gatehouse 
with a security tower like the others and then this leads back into the tour area and let's have another upper bird's eye view of this side so again we've got a similar sort of thing to the um uh eastern side i suppose you could call it um so we've got a river in the middle section that sort of connects to the central gully and then we have exhibits all the way around and the exhibits are mostly all on the same level apart from this one at the end and we've got invisible fencing protecting the tour ride itself and uh, locking the carnivores away from the herbivores so that there's no panicking and we also have another bridge here so I'm going to grab a truck and we'll start with uh, the tour, the second section of the tour. So here we are just leaving the midpoint station and we're going past the lagoon now and we'll be heading into the next part of the park. So this section of the park again I wanted to make use of dinosaurs I don't normally use. So I'm starting um, with two small um, carnivores for the first part of this exhibit. Again, we're just heading off there. Look at the lovely views you'd get on the back of this tour truck as you as you come round here, back into the park itself, past that security tower, and in through the double gatehouse. There we go. So on the right hand side, we have Concavenator and on the left hand side we have Monolophosaurus. I went with small carnivores because uh, we've had the big carnivore, the Giganotosaurus, and I don't use Monolopho too often. Uh, it's not a dinosaur I really like. I don't think it's very interesting. So um, there's our Monolophosaurus. And somewhere on the right hand side we should have Concavenator. Let's keep an eye out for those. There we go, there's our, our Monolophosaurus are quite close to the sonic uh, barriers. Hello there. Uh, but somewhere over here should be the wonderful Concavenator made by Leviathan and LA Studios. There we go, there's one of them. The lovely green patterning. Brilliant model, I love their Concavenators. We'll have a closer look at those in a second. They've got actually relatively small exhibits, but thanks to using invisible fencing and plenty of vegetation and such, it actually looks like they have more space than they actually do. Another lovely skin, the orange and the grey one. So they're kept separated by each other by the, uh, the sonic repulsive wall there. And then we head into the next major exhibit. So we pass over the wall. And again, I've tried to hide it as much as possible with rocks and vegetation as we head slightly upwards to the next exhibit. So this is primarily for herbivores. Uh, I can't quite remember what's actually in here though. So let's keep an eye out. This is actually quite a very large enclosure, but again, I've not put too many dinosaurs in here. And I think this is something that people make a mistake with. They make a very, they make an enclosure and then they fill it with too many dinosaurs and it just looks cramped and crowded. I think putting a few species in a few number in a large-ish enclosure just makes it look more realistic. Alright, okay, so here comes our... So this one is home to Styracosaurus, at least. I know that. Um, as we come up towards the bridge, there's a Styracosaurus here on the right. Not a big fan of Styracosaurus in JWE2, I have to admit. I don't think the skins are very nice. Um, they kind of are a bit ugly, I think. But um, we, we went with a reasonable one here. And then we cross this bridge again it's almost exactly the same as the bridge on the other side of the park but I wanted to make it look a little different so we've got the Jurassic Park um, towers here and actually in the water source over there to the right hand side we've got a pterosaur that's on a rock perch and actually in the dark 
that's lit up so it looks a lot more obvious. Just a little interesting decorative touch. Heading now to the other side of the bridge, we're running along this river that uh, forms the edge of the paddock. I know there is more than Styracosaurus in here, uh, just keep a lookout. I think perhaps maybe this enclosure could have done with a few more dinosaurs um, because it does seem to be quite empty. Either that or they're all sort of stuck at one end of the enclosure. What's this coming up here? Ah, so uh, Laura, Laura Titan is also in here with this lovely green uh, pattern skin there. Got the Styracosaurus again over on the right hand side. And again, using plenty of ginkgo trees just to make this uh, look green and lush. Oh, there's a horn going off, so I think there's dinosaurs in the way up ahead. The Allura Titan running around, so obviously they're being annoyed by the ringing. This is actually quite close to the edge of the map here. You see where the uh, invisible wall fencing is running along that boundary line. Oh, I think there's Hoangosaurus in here as well. We'll have to have a look at the uh, exhibits again for a closer look. And then we head uphill towards the final sort of enclosure um, on this tour ride. Now the final enclosure I wanted to be again something a little special but I didn't want it to be sort of T-Rex or Velociraptor or something obvious like that. So I went with a big carnivore and a medium carnivore and on the left hand side you should see some Majungasaurus. Now Majungasaurus is an animal I didn't like in the first game. Primarily I thought it was ugly and the skins weren't very good. This game has actually saved the Majungasaurus and I really ought to use it more often because the skins are actually really, really good. Oh, there are the Majungus. There is a Majungasaurus there coming across. This whole enclosure is open to both species of carnivore that are in here. But it's big enough that uh, they can share the space. So we've got the Majungasaurus and I've gone with, I think, a brown and orange skin pattern which I thought matched the environment. But also in here somewhere is a Acrocanthosaurus as our big sort of uh, end of tour ride sort of uh, show off animal. Um, but where is he? Let's have a look and see if we can keep an eye out for that. This enclosure is basically two levels. So we've got a high end with a, a rocky ridge and then just behind this ridge is a lower sort of beach area where there's water. Uh, we got the goat at least in here. So where is the acro? Probably sleeping if I know the acro. We're not going to be able to see it before the tour leaves here. Doesn't look like it. No, I can't see him. It looks like the aggro is hiding. And then this enclosure basically is the last um, enclosure area. And then we have another security tower and we have another Jurassic World gate house section as we leave this section of the park. And we have a couple of uh, statues here because this end of the park is basically um, a statue park which we'll go into in a second. We'll leave the tour right here as it heads back towards the first station and have another look at those uh, exhibits. So here is where the tour ride comes into the second section of the park and we have our Monolophosaurus here with our one... they do have wonderful uh, skins in the game I will accept that with a wonderfully beautiful crest, especially this sort of um, purple-pinkish patterning here. 
and let's go and have a look at LA Studios' concavenators. So I went with random skin patterns for these. Uh, so we've got a nice green one. We've got a nice sort of uh, caramel orange and uh, different color crests as they have a fight. I think my favorite is this one, which is sort of a, a gray with an orange belly. I just think that's a wonderful color scheme for that. And then we, of course, we have the herbivore enclosure here where most of the herbivores seem to hide from us. So let's have a look. So we've got the Allura Titan here. Lovely. I think there are male and female Allura Titans in here. I'll have to have a look. Ah, so it's not Holbangosaurus. So we've got Camp Cretaceous Kentros in here. Brilliant. These are oversized, of course. So they're probably more like Tajungosaurus or something like that. Uh, that's another Allura Titan. And uh, we've got the Styracosaurus, obviously. Is that it? Hmm, maybe, I, I think maybe I should have put another extra species in here. Because this is a little bit empty. Um, oh, and then here, here is the uh, pterosaur little sculpture here. Basically one of the statue mods, and I've just hid, hidden it as much as I can inside of this um, rock. Put some vegetation around it, stuck a light under it, and in the dark that actually lights up quite effectively. Um, so you've got more of the Styracosaurus here. Excellent. And then let's see if we can go and find the Acro. There he is. Just a simple skin, nothing too vibrant, something desert related. And just the one living alongside our lovely brown and orange Majungas. And then we have the rest of the enclosures you can see here. And then we move into this second, I would say second part of the guest area at the north, but it is connected to the rest. But it is, it's almost its own section here. So it's basically just more of a um, sort of another guest hotel area, but I kind of imagine this would be more of a family friendly general hotel area as opposed to those villas over there. Probably a little cheaper in some cases. We have more guest amenities here, um, plenty of restaurants and such. Again, bigger, I would imagine, for more family sized uh, groups seating area and then these two little garden sections which are basically two little statue parks and then we have an aviary here and I'm, I'm not going to go to guest view here um, because most of it we have um, already looked at but we have our, our restaurants and our amenities this little seating area here denoted by the jpog path plenty of uh, tables, chairs, and some biosyn decorations just to uh, make it look not too tably. But these statue parks are what I'm especially proud of. I love the statue mod, I think it's a great mod, but I wanted to do something different to it. So what I imagine is this is like a, a garden area and you'd go through with your kids or whatever and see what uh, dinosaurs you can find statue wise and there's plenty of opportunities to have photos taken as well so we've got a Parasaurolophus statue in here an Allosaurus statue in here um, I think there is another a Dilophosaurus hiding behind this tree line here and then in the second larger uh, statue park area we have uh, two raptors hiding in the trees here Brachiosaurus which forms a natural term sort of tunnel over this tree here and then uh, the Dimetrodon a couple of Dimetrodons having an argument over this area so yeah just a nice little guest section here and these little gardens this is a good way of filling up awkward space that you might have in your parks instead of just paving everything stick a few rocks in stick a few decorations in stick a few trees or vegetation in just make an, a little garden. No park is 100% enclosure or 100% uh, pathway. And uh, just as a little nice entrance to this statue zone, 
we have this wonderful Quetzalcoatl uh, statue again lit up underneath thanks to the lagoon decorations with plenty of vegetation around it just to bed it into the park. We have another seating area on the other side with this fountain as we head towards the hotel and we have some tapajara in here just to denote what's actually inside this aviary gallery. Now if I actually show you how the gallery is formed. So this aviary is connected to the hotels. Now I've tried to make it look as good as I can. Obviously clipping wise there's going to be a few nasty edges like here for example but the point is that you get a you get the effect basically of the hotels looking into the aviary but because of that we needed to make sure we went for a pterosaur that wasn't too dangerous so I went with tapajara because they're primarily not fish eating pterosaurs I think they're primarily fruit eating pterosaurs uh, from what I remember about the fossil evidence but even if they are you know primarily fish eaters they're not too big too dangerous they don't have massively sharp teeth or anything like that so they're not going to be a humongous danger to humans um, if they say put their arms through the netting here or if they come outside onto the balcony and um, yeah I think it's it's just a nice extra feature for the hotels to sell and to get tickets and again just uh, two aviary sections easily big enough for a few tabajara and uh, I think it looks rather good so that is basically the whole park two small guest areas, two huge tour sections connected together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly turn all the lighting off so you can have a look at what this place looks like in the dark. So here we are in the dark and the gloom at the park entrance and you can see what I've done is I've gone with this nice green lighting colour scheme for the entrance area with these lovely neon blue Fountains. I think all the fountains in the park are this neon blue. The amenities have this lovely warm orange glow to them. Just to mirror some of the other decorations. Here we have that lovely Spinosaurus fountain in blood red. Uh, over here with the Lyplorodon exhibits we have again more neon blue in the fountains. If I just pop in you can see there more effectively just the bioluminescence around the uh, coral reefs here for the Lyprodon. Really does add a nice touch to the coral. Uh, let's have a look around the rest of this guest zone. So we have obviously the Spinosaurus lighting, lovely. And here we have the Jurassic Tour area. And here's what I mean about the um, Star Trek-esque engine pods with the red ends and the blue lit on the sides. Let's just pop up here to the statue park section so you can see you know it's 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 not too over the top it's nice and subtle. Let's have a look at the Quetzalcoatl statue that's really impressive I think I love the, the green lighting. Same here with this lovely fountain-esque arrangement and inside the aviary lovely and let's just go back and have a quick look at the rest of the park so again in the night time all this bridging is lit up with the neon blue fountains and lighting towers nice and then if we go to the second area of the park Again, I've stuck with the green for the sails on this section. Have the lovely lighting around the main central fountain. Not any real major lighting effects of the rest of the park. Again, I've gone with subtle lighting sort of touches. Uh, stuck with the green for these sails again here. And then in here, we've gone with this lovely, brilliant red 
to match the volcanic biome of the Attenboroughsaurus enclosure. You can see there the lighting sunk into the fissures just to make it look very volcanic. And I don't think the rest of the park is really um, too showy offy. Oh, and then we have obviously this is the uh, what I mean about the pterosaur statue being illuminated there. Again, you can't do this without mods, but I think it's something we definitely need to have from front from Frontier is the ability to p put these um, ground lights wherever we like, just in order to do stuff like this, because it really does help show off the park. Um, to be able to light up sections that we want to light up. Um, I've just remembered I haven't done this. This is what I mean with the sort of blue lighting. It's not as effective as I would have liked, but it's, it's you know, it's there to give a little interest to the, the enclosure. So uh, there we go. That is the park pretty much completed and toured for you all. I hope I've given you some interesting ideas for your own parks. Let me know in the comments what are your favourite bits about this particular San Diego Safari Park. There will be more tours around my finished parks as and when I actually finish my parks. Um, and do remember we are halfway through building the Monopoly Park at the present time. So uh, I'll be coming back to that on Sunday I think and yeah uh, keep a look out for the rest of our videos in the weeks and months ahead give us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already for more content not just from me but the other members of Tricolor Gaming and I'll see you all next video until then stay safe and goodbye